So real quick, uh, we're going to talk about solubility. Okay, uh, There are some definitions and some terms that go along with this uh, that you need to be aware of. We're going to be looking at solubility this year qualitatively and quantitatively. So there's sometimes where we're just wondering if things are going to dissolve and sometimes we want to know how much is going to dissolve. Okay, So first we need to understand the parts of a solution. We know what a solution is already. Homogeneous mixture, one phase. Okay, The parts of a solution are the solute, the solute is the part of the solution that dissolves. Usually it's present in the smaller amount. So there's usually less solute than solvent. The solvent is the part of the solution into which the solute dissolves. Usually that's the part of the solution that's present in a greater amount. Okay, So a solution is made of a solute and a solvent. Now most of the solutions that we deal with in chemistry are aqueous solutions. Aqueous solutions are solutions in which the solvent is water. Okay, So things are dissolved in water. And the solutes are usually salts or other compounds that mix thoroughly with water. So we'll be dealing primarily with aqueous solutions. So we have water as our solvent. Solute is variable. Okay, So what is solubility? Solubility is defined as the maximum mass of solute that will dissolve in a given mass of solvent at a given temperature. There's three parts to this then. We need to know the mass of solute, we need to know the mass of solvent, and we need to know the temperature that the solution is made at. And that will tell us what the solubility is. The solubility is the maximum amount of stuff that can dissolve. Okay, We can refer to solutions as being either saturated. A saturated solution contains the maximum amount of solute at that temperature or unsaturated. Unsaturated solutions contain less than the maximum amount, any amount less. And then finally, there's something called supersaturated, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, So really, we're talking about, when we talk about solubility, we're talking about making a saturated solution at a given temperature. Okay, So what are some factors that affect solubility? What, what, what are some things that affect whether or not something's going to dissolve? Well, for one thing, uh, the nature of the solute, its structure, what it's made of, what it's like. There are some things that dissolve better than others. So you can put certain substances like sugar into water and you can dissolve a ton of sugar into water. But in the same amount of water, something like magnesium sulfate or sodium chloride doesn't dissolve nearly as well. And that's because those substances are a little different in how they're put together. So the nature of the solute is kind of important, and we'll explore more of that as we learn more about compounds. Uh, agitation, that just means stirring or shaking it. right? You can get things to dissolve a little bit better if you stir them up or if you shake them up sometimes. Uh, that's, of course, if there's enough water and if, you know, if everything's working well. Um, temperature is another factor, and we've just talked a little bit about that in the definition of solubility. In general, solid solutes, solids that you want to dissolve into, into water, uh, in general, they dissolve better at higher temperatures. The classic example of this is if you have uh, iced tea versus hot tea, and you want to put sugar in your iced tea and you want to put sugar in your hot tea, it takes a lot longer for the sugar to dissolve in your iced tea than it does in the hot tea. In the hot tea, you put it in, it's almost gone instantly. But in the iced tea, it takes longer. And sometimes you get that layer of sugar at the bottom that doesn't dissolve. Well, that's because of the temperature. The colder the temperature is, the less solid dissolves. Gases are exactly the opposite. Gases do dissolve in water. That's how fish breathe. Fish can't breathe in, ox in water unless there's oxygen involved. And the oxygen has to be dissolved in the water. So with gases, uh, solubility actually goes down as temperature goes up. So the hotter the water gets, the less oxygen is dissolved in there. And some species of fish are very sensitive to that. So if the temperature of their, of their environment goes up even a couple of degrees, they may die out because there's not enough oxygen dissolved for them. Okay, And then finally, the um, relative amount of solvent. So if you want something to dissolve, if you add more water, usually you're going to get it to dissolve. Because remember, solubility is the maximum amount of solute that dissolves in a given mass of solvent. You increase the mass of the solvent, you increase the amount of solute that can dissolve in it. Okay, So those are all things we can control about a solution to help things dissolve a little bit better. Quantitative solubility. So qualitative solubility is simply just uh, will it dissolve or not. 
Quantitative solubility deals with the numbers behind it. We want to know how much solute will dissolve. And we want to know um, how much solvent is required and what temperature that's going to require. Okay, So if we want to compare the solubility of two different substances, we have to dissolve them in the same amount of water. Usually, the standard amount is 100 grams, but you don't have to use 100 grams of water. You could use less and then make some conversions to figure out how much would dissolve in 100 grams. For example, if I find that at uh, 50 degrees Celsius, I can dissolve 5 grams of a particular salt into 10 grams of water, then how much would dissolve into 100 grams of water at that same temperature? Well, if 5 grams dissolves in 10 grams of water at 50 degrees, then 50 grams would dissolve at 100, in 100 grams of water at that same temperature. Okay, it's, it's proportional. So if I want to compare, though, it's best to have the same mass of solvent so that I can compare masses of solute. Okay, the temperature has to be reported because, as I just said a little while ago, the, as the temperature goes up, more solute can dissolve for solids and vice versa. So I need to know what temperature I'm at so I can tell if this is very soluble or not soluble at all. Okay. The way that I can uh, represent this in a visual way is using something called a solubility curve. This is a graph. It's a graph that shows quantitative solubilities of different substances at various temperatures. They're called solubility curves because the lines are actually curved. And you'll see a picture of that in just a second. Okay. Uh, because we're trying to compare different substances at different temperatures, we need to keep the mass of solvent constant, and that means the mass of solvent is almost always 100 grams. That's the standard for solubility. Uh, and then I can use these curves to calculate solubilities at other temperatures or other masses of solvents, etc. And we'll learn how to do that in class. So let's take a look at the solubility curve, and you'll see what it looks like. So here's a solubility curve. Uh, these are a number of different substances. You'll see each line is labeled with a formula for a substance. So we have Ki at the top. That's called potassium iodide. NaNO3 is sodium nitrate. KNO3, potassium nitrate, and so on. Um, and these lines cross through the graph. Now on the x-axis, we have the temperature in degrees Celsius. And on the y-axis, we have the amount of solute that can dissolve into 100 grams of water to make a saturated solution. Right? So if I, for example, find the KNO3 line and I look and see uh, at 50 degrees how much KNO3 can dissolve into 100 grams of water. So I go to 50 degrees along the bottom, I go up to the KNO3 line and where it crosses uh, the, the 50 Celsius line, and then I go back over to the left and I see that it crosses somewhere at around 85 grams of KNO3. So what that means is that if I have 100 grams of water and I heat that water up to 50 degrees Celsius, I can dissolve 85 grams of KNO3 into that and it will dissolve completely to make a saturated solution. Now, no more than that, right? No more will dissolve, but 85 grams will. If I dissolve any less than 85 grams in that 100 grams of water at 50 degrees Celsius, I've made an unsaturated solution. So a saturated solution is the maximum amount and I can read that off this graph and then any less is an unsaturated solution. So you'll notice that as I go up in temperature, the lines generally curve upward towards the right. That's because the solubility, the amount that I can dissolve, increases. Except for gases, which are the dotted lines, they go down. You'll also see a couple of salts that go down, solid substances that go down as you increase temperature. They're very unusual, and there's some reasons for that that we'll maybe get into as we learn more about structure. But this is what a solubility curve looks like, and that's generally how you use it.